Hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn. I'm hosting today with my good friend Dale Bagini. What's up Dale? How are you? Yeah, good man. Just chilling. Got a little bit of a headache but I'm here. I'm ready. I'm good to go. Packing the painkillers, the neurofen, yeah, just to push yeah. through. <laughs> just gotta t hit that temple a little bit, you know. Oh, it's, it's it's a bit sore, but I'm good. I'm I'm feeling good. I'm ready to finish off what we started yesterday. Yeah, that's right. So this is part two of a two-part series. So if you missed it and you wanted to kind of see uh, how we got where we're at, you can go back and check that out. Um, but uh, but we'll do a little bit of a kind of you know overview. What was on the last episode, kind of thing, as yeah. as as we jump into it. So um. Yeah, strap in. We're just going to get straight into it. So we've um, been right. illustrating these these cars in, in Photoshop. So throw questions in chat as we're rolling along. Yeah, definitely put them in there. Give us some suggestions of um, we're going to do some coloring today. So feel free to jump in chat and um, send your design preferences, I guess. Can we call it that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some armchair like uh, creative directing. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yesterday we were talking about how we manipulated a couple of... Um, car images to create kind of like our base or, or template for our, our illustration um that's kind of where we got to as our, our merger it's not heaps worlds apart but it's definitely like it's a little bit custom a little bit different we spoke about all that um the the things that we tweaked and changed so you can, if you want you can check out yesterday's video we won't spend too much time talking about that um, we roughed out a little bit of a, a guide or a conceptual design that we spoke about having um, clients feed back on this or customers feeding back on this as an illustration and not the Photoshop comp because it is very different. The, the mm. output's very different to a photo. Um, this is more for like directional use only. So this is where we're headed. Um, we roughed it in and then we came up with this type tighter sketch i guess like it was a little bit cleaner a little bit neater it would be like a round two pass i think that would do do just fine um mm. but then i uh spent some time last night just going a little bit further and just getting it to this which is you can see it's a bit more cleaner it's it's now got really big fat wheels at the back um it's it's just looking a little bit more polished i'll zoom in a little bit i just actually do full screen here nice so when you say you kind of polished it up, is it just spending a little bit more time getting the the line work right, like without, yeah. without me talking in your ears? Like yeah, is no, it just so a yes, bit more time? Yesterday, it's like you can see it's quite like the, there are a lot of imperfections and stuff, and that's based on yeah time time mostly, and um yeah just spending that little bit of time last night just gives it a little bit of extra love like i can go in and work on some details and and things that are are, are, are quite critical yeah. um and then i just add some like shading lines and stuff like or shading just some blacks and stuff just to give it start giving it some some tones and stuff like that so for the most part what i did last night wasn't very different to what we spoke about yesterday but um just just to go over it really quickly, I just used that one same brush, the um, hard round pressure size, and I just was using my reference photo. So there's my reference photo underneath. Obviously, I don't leave it that dark. I turn it down a bit. So let's do that. So I just do that and just start drawing over everything that I, I want to keep, I don't want to keep. Um, obviously, I didn't put the number. Um, I thought we'd probably just discuss if it's going to have a design if it needs a design um but yeah just you can see i just not really super um i guess critical about the shading to reflect the photo again we're, we're illustrating based off our photo we're not yeah i'm not trying to reproduce a photo in an illustrative um format because there are people that do that and it's a lot more i guess time consuming um there's like the Illustrator version, the Photoshop one, the 3D renders, all that stuff. But this is, this is kind of I'd call it like the apparel version, because mm. I feel like this would be the this would be one of those things that if I, um, if I was gonna put this on a shirt, it would print really well. 
Um, right. The the line's really bold. There's a lot of um white gaps and and black gap. Ah, uh, sorry, black work in it. So it, I know from a reproduction point of view, and I know I talk about this a lot, but um I'm very conscious of what gets lost and what what doesn't. Mm. Um, there are designs that are a lot more complicated. I got a shirt on at the moment. It's it's like DTG. Hey, I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that big. Show this right, again. Here. Yeah. So it's like. There's a lot of detail, but it's a, a different format, right? Like it's a, right. it's it's they've used a photo and they've done that um, direct to garment um, method where it's basically like a four color print on a shirt. It goes through a machine that's like a big, big desktop printer is the easiest way to explain it. Mm. Um, if I was gonna screen print a design like this car, I'd like it to be bold lines. You know, I, I can separate the colors. I can separate black whatever else you know all that stuff so yeah that's the format we've got now this is where we're at mm. all right that's cool so. i like that like the the benchmark for you a lot is will it print on a shirt <laughs> i think it's just because i it doesn't matter who my clients are and what they, they want to do eventually their artworks end up on some form of merch whether it be a shirt mm. a, a jumper whatever it is um so I like to think that if I'm designing, I'm always considering that that part for them, even if they haven't mm. asked it. So I think that's why my style is the way it is. It's just out of um, habit and experience, I guess. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, I'm gonna. I won't go into too much of the black work again. That's just like a. It's it's basically taking our our line work that we did yesterday. And just giving it more love, so spending a little bit more time going over everything. So I'll just do a quick, like, a little bit of a quick drawing. Okay, as you're doing that, just check in with chat. What's up, everybody? I can see uh, Dark Hours is here looking after us. R&B as well. Great to see you in chat. Alessandra, I hope you're well. Um, but yeah, let us know if you're around. If you've got any questions as we're rolling along. Um, it's always great to hear from you. Just in the Behance chat. All right, so I'll just um, I'll just get rid of this for an example. So that sorry, that looks like I just spent exactly two seconds drawing that. When I say that I'm refining it or spending some time polishing it, I'm going in there and kind of being a bit more precise with the line work, mm. and considering like that this has a join in it there. And then there's like a bend in the mirror there, you know, and I just, I can see that there's a little bit more details in there. So that's, that's all I'm, I, I went and did. I didn't do anything um, secret or sneaky to make it look any better. It's just time spent that we didn't have yep. yesterday. So now we're here. This is where we are. Nice. Which is cool. Like, I, I think it's it's actually coming up really cool. It's it's looking great. Now I'm glad that you put it, for, for those that missed the first stream, you kind of did a bit of a, like, not kit bash, but you kind of took the, the rims or the wheels from um, the, a different car and added them in. Correct. And that's kind of the highlight here, which is really cool. Like, there's something yeah. about that front, that front rim that makes it, like... So that yeah, that's the original. Yeah, so one. that was like, this, and there's no denying that's a good look. Like that is a good looking car. It looks great, but I just like those the wheels that we chucked on were a little bit more racy. Little, I don't know, it looked a bit more, you know, aftermarket, a bit more sporty, and and to get it from that where we are to here is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, like it, and it's it is like it's it's good for if you want. I don't know, maybe you just feel like concepting a car and designing a car that you've never seen before or you've got a mustang and you want to see it with different wheels just draw them on there just trace them yep. it works <laughs> it works um alessandra in chat saying i uh, love your hat yeah i'm having a really bad hair week so uh it's hats all week today uh this yeah. week and uh jeremy lord is in chat hey jeremy what's up jeremy buddy? peace um okay so i i think what I was going to talk about is, and and speak of the devil, Jeremy Lord just comes in the room when we're going to speak color. So <laughs> he, he's the professional, but I'm going to show you how I address the color, I guess, application. Um, the quickest way I find is I like to just create a new layer. Um, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to join these two layers because I want them to stay together. That was just all my black works now together. I had it on the, 
darker tones on another layer. Mm. I'm just going to get rid of these into a group. All right. Can I throw a quick question in that we just got from chat? Just yeah, sure. Before we jump into the next section, I think I know you're about to jump in, but um, is the question is: Is there any part of the creative process that sometimes you don't follow, especially when you are tired or on a tight deadline? Uh, the 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 process itself, I guess, will always be the same. It's just drawing to me. But I think there's things like um, file management that will lack like if i if i'm trying to just get it done i won't do the layers like i might do the layers messy or not name them or um when i'm trying to do outputs for um like approval i might just do a screen grab instead of exporting a low res jpeg or png because the screen grabs like two seconds is done um those things happen a lot because i i like i said yesterday i get very time poor so i want to just get it done the quickest way possible but i try to make sure the actual process the the drawing process there's nothing kind of is compromised if that right. does that does that answer that that's it does it does to me yeah that makes yeah. sense like you know part of the the creative process of once you're doing things there's no there's no real wiggle room you can't kind of cheat or take yeah take shortcuts during yeah. that part but it's like you might get an email that's like not grammatically checked or it might be sent over text message or something. Yeah. Or it's like yeah. screenshot send. It's like, all right, I've got to do that because then I'm going to get onto this. And then when I get my yeah. feedback, I'll just jump back onto it. Yeah. You might not get like a big explanation of what's happening if it's like exactly. a really tight deadline. Makes sense. Yeah, no. Yeah. And it's it's just like I said, the art will never be compromised, but maybe like the, the presentation or the, yeah, the email might be a very quick... Um, yeah, here you go. Here's this with spelling errors all over it, but it's okay because the art <laughs> looks good. It's fine. Yep. All right. Cool. So, um, color. There's a thousand, thousand and one different ways to do it. I guess you could. The first way is like, um, I guess traditional. Just like make a new layer. You can just color. I guess you could color it. You could depends what you want to do. You could color it like this, like you're coloring a book, mm. uh, like in a book. Sorry. Um, there's another way I could do it. I could do, maybe I just want to do it like in, in blocks, like I could just draw, making sure that there's no gaps there and I could just fill that with yeah. the great, with the bucket tool. Um, the only thing I find with that is, um, the, there is like a little bit of a edge to the, the work. There's this little white line that appears. I think that's the yeah. is it the aliasing and stuff yep. like that. So yep. um, there are ways around it. I don't do it that way because of that exact reason. I just would rather just do it like this where I just get the uh, lasso tool up here and then I'll just try my best to crop in or not crop in, trace on that black line. If I don't get it all the way, it's fine. I'm just doing half the car just to, to give you an example. I get. I feel so much pressure when I know Jeremy's in the in the room. <laughs> Everyone has someone like that. Like if they're in chat, um, and it's like, oh no. I'm but the good thing is, this change Jer changes the audience a bit. Yeah, no, but uh, we all know that Jeremy is a great guy, and he would only support anything that people <laughs> do. So I'm gonna. Just yeah, Jeremy. It. Jeremy known for being incredibly harsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not really. I Okay, so I've I've done my lasso tool. Obviously, it's it's a little bit rough, um, but it's just like created a selection under the um, under the black layer. So I'm doing it on a separate layer. You can see up here, and then yeah, you can do it with the the fill bucket again. Um, I again not ideal because I want to be able to have the option to to switch out colors. Um, I think it's easier if I do go down to this little. Um, this little icon down here and hit the solid color feature mm -hmm. and that'll just create a new layer above well actually it put it it merged it already so that's fine so i've got like my layer now is a um a color picker layer so it's a mask it's created a, as a mask and now i can just double click that color hang on i'll just select that so i've got red and i want red i want green i can do green mm. so if I did it with the gradient fill, uh, sorry, the the fill bucket, I think it would have been a little bit, um, it's a, a little bit more work because you then you need to go and highlight it again. 
refill it. At least with this, all I gotta do is... Oh, sorry, this is showing up on a different screen. Alright, so when I double click that little icon up here, yeah, it pulls up the picker, and then again, I can just change that color as easy as that. Yeah, that's great. Makes sense. Yeah, makes heaps of sense. Yeah, it didn't it didn't show up, so I I changed the screen like aspect oh. ratio. I'm like, oh, it must have been behind, but yeah, it makes no, sense. It popped over to other screen. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm using the two two that's monitors. Right. I'm not used to it. Um, so yeah, and now that I've got that that mask layer, um. I won't go into exactly how these work, but if you click on that one, you can double click that, it'll select the color, you can change the color. If I, I, if I click on this, I can make amends to um, that layer. So whatever I do on with that selected will appear here in the color that we've chosen. If I mm. do, if I flip it to white, it would, it'll just erase that out of the mask. Yeah. Or you can just physically erase it. Sorry, I didn't. It doesn't look like I choose the tool. I just flipped the pen. The pen's got the rubber on the back. All oh, right, the way the Wacom. Like, yeah. If you flip it around, it's like an eraser. Yeah. So it. In, I, so I'll just go in and I'd erase all the parts that I know can't be blue or I don't want blue, which are lights, chrome, um, you know. Yeah, whatever's not meant to be painted. The window, yeah. Yeah, the window, even up here. Uh, yeah, like, oh no, I didn't go that far, but the chrome strips between the doors and stuff like that. So then I've got, um, oh, this probably wouldn't be blue anyway. So yeah, I just can erase whatever I don't want, or if I need to, I can, I can add, I can add more to it as well. Oops. So I can add whatever I want, like mm. it's going to fill it in the blue. Or if I've missed a spot, go in and tidy it up. But yeah, that's how I would usually apply the color. I think, um, and then I'd also, because I know I'm going to have like, I've already got like my dark tones, well, by dark tones, I just add this like little black strip to kind of give it some dimension and, and curve to it underneath. Mm give some shines and stuff like that. What I'll do, I usually erase on this layer my highlights. So if I want highlights, I'll just get rid of this blue and leave, you know, like some highlights on the edges of the panels and stuff like mm. that. Not a must, but I just go around and do some of these everywhere. So I'm just I'm just using the the brush tool, and when it's set to black, it's it's actually erasing, and when it's set to white, it adds. Mm. So if you see the color switch, you can see the the add and delete thing happening. So yeah, I do this. Just work on it like that. Get some of those like shines and stuff in there. That's great. And how do you know, like, which side of the... This is, like, a pretty rudimentary question, but how do you know, like, which side of the, of the line? black line work that you would want to pick for something like that? Or does it not uh, really matter? You just kind of... I think it, it does matter to a degree if you want to be consistent. Like, mm. realistically, those two that I just did here probably should have been on the other side because I've got this one here on top, and I know that's a high spot. But I think it serves its purpose either way. Um the luxury of it being illustrative is that you can kind of you can be the creator of where those lights hit or the the dark tones hit sometimes they don't make sense when you look at it but overall it always i don't think people question it too much i mm. think as a as an artist you might um you might have fellow artists look at it and go oh but if the light's hitting from up this direction why mm. is there highlights here so yeah, there's rules and, and there's, you know, there's things we should follow, but also it's just about having fun really, isn't it? It's, yeah, <laughs> I like that. It's, I don't know. You get too hung up on the, the details. I, I'd never get anything done. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of like I would just go around and, and add some highlights, like just, and they're just going to be like, all it does is 
I could add a white layer on top, but I just take it out of that layer. So whatever color I would change it to, it's always going to have those white highlights and stuff. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, can I just jump in with another question yeah, uh, sure. from chat? Would you would you ever well, would you also incorporate clipping masks in your coloring slash shading? Yeah, I, I I definitely think you could. Um, that's basically what this is, right? Like it's a mask layer yeah. with a color background foreground that that is applied. Um, clipping masks are great. I think they're they're super handy. Um, I just think. For, for the purpose of this, I would just do it this way where it's solid color filled into the shape of my car and then I just work on that as my negative space. And then, yeah, like I said, 1,001 ways to kind of skin a cat, right? Yep. Is, that, is what they say. It's no one go try it, but it's, defi <laughs> it's definitely one of those things. Like I know um, a lot of people do it different ways, but this, this way works for me and the clipping mask mm. is definitely a, another good option. Yeah, cool. All right, Very so, good. all right, so we've got we've got the do we do we feel like we all agree that that we understand that um, lasso solid layer fill kind of thing we we feel good about that. Yeah, let us know if there's any questions. But yeah, let's let's move on to the next bit. But yeah, if there's any other questions about it, throw them in. Throw all them right. in chat. I'm good. I'm I'm with you. All right. Well, if that, you've got that, me. You've probably got chat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So I've got I've 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 got my color. Um, We've done all that, but now, as always, there's always a a pre pre made layer here or group. We'll call this colors. And so what I've got in here is just basically exactly what we spoke about, but more, I guess, again, polished. That's a little bit cleaner. I know I've got everything out of the way that needs to be out of the way. Um, I don't know if let, look. I heard someone say orange yesterday, so let's do, let's make it orange. That's right. For orange the was what for orange the was thrown out. That's nice. Carrying it over from from streams. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I, I didn't forget. I just um I I I chose red because it's it's the fastest color, obviously. Right. Well, you were in a hurry, so you had to red yeah, faster yeah. to draw with as well, <laughs> in case you didn't know. So I I have this kind of um orange vibe happening. I don't know how the, the quality is looking for you guys, but um, sometimes I think, you know, the paint kind of looks a little bit like, um, it's it's a little bit like flat, like it's looking very boring. So sometimes I'll add a, a grain layer to it. So it kind of gets like a bit of like a, a metallic, mm. so to speak. Like it puts a little bit of texture in there. Doesn't need to happen, but I think it looks kind of cool. And to do that, it's just, it's basically just selecting my base color, putting another color of like a gray or whatever you want to put. Mm. And then, oh, actually, didn't need to be one of those layers, but let's just merge these. Then I just go to filter noise, add noise. And then I just like, I play around with this thing, you know, if it wants to be chunky or like, you know, real subtle, um, just apply that. And then it's just a, like a, a mult, uh, sorry, overlay. And nice. then I just, and then I just turn the transparency down so you can just see it. Like I'll tell you right now, this will not print, like it will not reproduce like that. That grain is so subtle that it'll just get, um, bled into each other. It's, right. this is. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, okay. I, I would suggest this for online use only, like yep. maybe just like a RGB, like little graphic for I don't know, like your web banner or something. But I wouldn't recommend doing this step for um, print. So obviously, it's flat colors, solid colors like that are always going to print better. So if you wanted to show some sort of texture on a on a print, let's use shirt as the example. Would you do like color half tone or uh, something yeah. like that? Yeah, you like could use half tones. You... Yeah. Um, I I also have I don't know if you in that um beetle artwork we had yesterday. Um, you could use stuff like like tones like that, like where it's got yeah. like a little bit of a a defined texture to it where it is kind of um a, a little bit more like well it's going to be easier to produce um those those dots that happen in this grain are so 
fine and like little that obviously as soon as you go into anything that's uh, when that goes to print it, they might be able to hold a, a little bit of it mm. but i think that's that's zoomed into what are we looking at 300 percent. that's that's um pretty fine grain in there i think so mm. I, I would use like yeah maybe like a vector or like a a half tone let's so you could do it like this i guess um so let's let's do it in this way so oh before we get there uh, i would do another uh, another layer of color which is a little bit darker than that uh the, the base color that we've chosen but not quite into that black realm and just give it some more like build mm. up like those those i guess those color layers and probably be a little bit neater than me. It's cool. There's something about like adding that, just what you just did then, like adds like a lot of like volume. Yeah. To... Sh shall we see it from like full screen so people can see what's happening? Oops, sorry. So if it's on, you can straight away see that it like adds another, another level of, yeah, like that. I know that it feels like now, sorry, I'm pointing at my other screen like everyone can see it. <laughs> um, yeah. So this starts to feel like it's kind of, you can see the door isn't straight, so it's got kind of like curved, but now it feels like the door's actually curving a little bit, like straight away if you yeah. add those colors. Um, again, application of like those those darker tones and the highlights helps. Um put them in the wrong place that froze your eye a little bit like this is probably not 100 percent accurate but looking at it uh, i'm getting you know like if a customer was like yeah we want those wheels and we want to see what it looks like with an orange paint job then it, this we've we've done our job you know yeah if they yeah. want to talk about that the sun was setting on the east side and they didn't like the way it's hitting the car then they'll probably have to deal with that in their own time <laughs> this, this is this is kind of i'd love to tell a client to deal with something in their own time i'm gonna uh, hold that in my back pocket for one day when i want to yeah, burn a bridge I, I don't think there's ever going to be a time for that but uh i'm just trying to be <laughs> i'm just trying to say what am I, I don't i don't like the way that you did this it's like you can just deal with that in your own time like peace out that's amazing please, you made my day yeah please note that i've never done that i would never <laughs> uh, but you know like sometimes you you just have to deal with it looking like it looks cool enough like you know what yeah. i mean it, it looks good enough like it's doing its job but yeah i think um adding like well so what's this this is now like a three color no orange dark orange black and white so four color four color job do you count white i didn't realize you counted white i i would count white because some some printers use that as a like a base color under right. certain colors so i uh, oh, especially yeah. okay. if, if you're printing on a black shirt they'll put a, a white um it's almost base. like a primer right yeah yeah like correct base, yeah it, okay. it'll lift lift all those colors up so I, i'd say a four color but like three color on a white shirt yeah right yeah, yeah. Makes but sense. um i think it's nice to be conscious about like um, color use and and all that sort of stuff because if you can make it work with less amount of colors, it's always going to be cheaper for for um, clients and and things like that. And a client saving money is a happy client. There's no no two ways about it. It's just money saved in in any sort of field is great. So I I, I like this kind of style where it's like minimum numbers, but I've still got like a lot of um depth and tone in the car. Mm. Um, if I want to add some, like you said, if I want a little bit more of like adding the, the speckles and things like that, um, i got a heap of brushes in here, but if you don't have, um, if you don't have any of the, of these brushes, there are still the standard, um, sorry, I'm just going to close some of these, um, the standard special effects brushes in Photoshop. Um, mm. I believe they're from... Uh, Kyle, they are yes. Kyle T Webster's ones. Yep. Um, there's a there's a there's a 35 half tone and a 38. You can just click on that one. I always use this one because I just like it. But um, what I will tell you is that if you have this half tone and you're gonna use it, I'm gonna put this on another layer. You can see the half tone there. You can add like more of the shading in half tone as well. Mm. It adds a little bit more of that volume that you're talking about, but like in less of a color, but you're still 
using only four colors. Um, you could half tone the whole car if you want to get that um, texture that we we're talking about. You could yeah. do that. So I guess like, I don't know how clear that is, but you can see that it feels like now you've got this other tone that's lighter than that dark tone, which is giving you a fifth color without being a fifth color, which is, is handy. Yeah. Um, otherwise, like Flynn said, you could, you could also go in and just, I guess you could just fill that whole background with that half tone. Right. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but like, <laughs> you can have to make a big, bigger brush. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, so you can see like, you could, you could do something like that and maybe put it in a different tone or even with that, it looks, it looks pretty good. I don't know if I zoom in, it's better. Um, but yeah, you can see that the half tones work, and you're kind of getting it like it's a, an extra color for free, I guess. The, in, in my yeah. opinion, um, otherwise, if that if that um, brush isn't to your liking, you can always go into that said brush, and you can um, play around with all the settings and change the scale so that that um, that half tone is pretty tight still on that artwork. So you can you can see if you just you can expand it as big as you want. It starts becoming less of a circle, but if you make it, it was a hundred percent. If I make it a hundred and ninety, let's just see that. You can see the difference. I just close that. It's a much yeah. more obvious half tone, um, and what that does, I guess, kind of lightens the look of the color a little bit. But yeah, you could you could do it half tones. Half tones work. Um, that's very subtle, but it looks like because it's so spread out now, I kind of can't see it. So it, it might be better to keep those half tones tight if you're going to use them. But yeah, that's that's um one way to get texture, one way to add uh, extra tones into it as well. Mm. And yeah, that's that's kind of the the basis of like how I get to this this color version and this part of the car where it is like that's almost ready for presenting but we do want to go a little bit custom so we, we can add um i don't know if chat's got some ideas we spoke about flame jobs and um stripes and decals if there's something that we can add um i'll keep adding in some um little details and stuff but chuck it in the chat all right let's check it let's check in with chat there has been um some great chat going on but i didn't want to interrupt dale at all okay, at sorry, any point sorry. no 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 i didn't want to interrupt because that was really great like really like getting kind of a couple of different ways of, of doing color and doing shading and also yeah. the reasons around why you would like even like a little bit of history of like halftone like is really valuable if you're doing yeah. something digital you can kind of do whatever you want so whatever yeah. you look at is what you get but yeah. when it comes to printing something and then also printing on apparel or a shirt or we talked about black and white as well so it's really yeah. like useful information yeah um cool. and uh i didn't want to stop that nah, stop that going good. when it was so good but there are a couple of questions uh, sure. first first is there's been a lot of talk about flames uh, yes. being the decal on the side and look i just okay. think it's the way we're going guys there's right. uh, <laughs> been a lot yeah. of talk about flames um Jeremy, uh, we we were mucking around with flames actually in the last stream, so it's quite funny that you jumped in um, and he said, "Give us some flame decals on the front, mate." All right, um, all right. <laughs> and also, that. when we we're talking about the printing process, Jeremy jumped in with, "If you're printing on a black tea, can you just leave the black as the tea color?" So that was a uh, question. I I, th I think so. I, I believe so. Um, I think that's up to the discussion, but between client and um, printer really I uh, I know that you can leave it black and yes there are shirts that are done um, where it's basically a, a hollowed out black I think I would still want the white um, underneath because I just think it would hold the whole artwork more solid uh, but I like mm. I don't like thick prints but I like them to feel like they're they're gonna stand, you know, my washing ability because I want that thing to. <laughs> they're last going in the it. dryer. They're going yeah, in the dryer. Know, we'll put I, it that way. Yeah. I, I want it to feel strong, but yeah, I I can't see why not. I think that's a a valid thing to do. Yeah. There we go. And um, Annika, hi Annika, great to see you in chat as well. Um, how does Dale print this kind of drawing? How would I print it for myself? Yeah. How would you print it? Yeah. Um, most of what I print, because I'm very much a bit of a, um, 
can I say tight ass? Like, am I allowed to say that? You just did. I, yep. I'm, yeah, I'm, it's I'm, live. I'm, I can't yeah. take it back, even if I was if I didn't like it. So yeah, that's totally I, I, fine. I, I like to stick to like <laughs> my prints. I like them mostly as prints, and it might be like a, a um, like a screen print or a digital print on a poster. But I like to print my stuff personally on a, on a poster. If I was printing this on a shirt, I would definitely be printing it with that fourth color on a black shirt white base, all of that stuff, but um, I would usually screen print over digital um, it, on merch and I would digital or screen print onto um, stocks, I guess, like paper stocks and stuff because I think um, digital games come a long way and they can they can produce some pretty good quality. Screen print's just, um, it's impressive to talk about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, like I'm it. gonna. I'm just gonna get ready for this flame job. So I'm gonna get rid of some of these highlights for a second because they're disturbing me. <laughs> get some flames, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got about 20 minutes left, by the way. Uh, Questions, comments, yeah. etc. We've got 20 minutes. Man, it goes fast when it's uh, it really it's lots does. of fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna do do the flames that like work for me. Yeah, you do it. All right. I'm gonna make a. Okay. There's a lot of chaos when all these groups start opening, so I'm just gonna go up here. The shot. The let's call this what it is. It's the outlines. So that will take away all my. Well, see that that is the as the money shot. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> it's like a how the sausage is made kind of. Thing. Yeah, put the pig skin back on. I say. <laughs> All right, but that's um. Can I? Can we just talk about this for a second? That this was eleven o'clock at night last night. I was. <laughs> I was quite tired. Um, Jeremy, can you please leave the chat? Do not look at this. Um, <laughs> I get I get a little bit lazy sometimes, but look at that. You would never have known. It doesn't matter. No one no. You, you know, no one would see it unless you were live streaming it yeah. out. But you know. Alright, so okay, I'm gonna give this this flame job a crack and I'm gonna do a black outline just because it's gonna be easy for me to see. And I think if I had a car I wouldn't want it to start until the headlight. So I'm just gonna I'm I'm hyping myself up. Sorry, I was like I'm ready. Yeah, I'm like I want to do it in one one hit. I don't want to have to muck around too much. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to talk. I don't want to throw you. I don't want to oh, be responsible. No, that's all right. It's just it's digital. It's it's uh, we can fix everything. <laughs> so I'm just turning my smoothing on. We discussed smoothing yesterday. I need a little bit. All right. If there's a better way to do flames, feel free to do it. All right, that's that's pretty. They're, they're pretty good flames. That's amazing. I, I'd I'd rock that on a car. Like, look at it. It's, yeah. It doesn't look terrible. All right, let's add some. Let's add some color so they look like flames. I was holding. I was holding my breath. I, I, I almost know, passed I, out. Like I, I disappeared off off screen. I was so close to the the. The Wacom, it was um, it was intense. I was considering turning my camera off just for that <laughs> like, little bit, but I realized you probably wouldn't be looking at it anyway, so <laughs> the joke wouldn't land. <laughs> All right, let me. Um, I'm gonna chuck on. I don't know, chat. What do you think? I think it's amazing. We, it, Dale did it uh, like uh, in a sketch version as well. These flames yesterday, and I was just like, "What? That was crazy to me! Like how good they were." And he was like, "Oh, they're not very good." Oh, it's you know, I, I like I said, I'm a, I'm a car guy, so I like a lot of um car artists and I guess painters and stuff and if they saw that they'd probably just yeah let's not I'm glad they're painting cars and not online I hope <laughs> I well yeah chat chat agrees with me so sick uh, um yeah, yeah Alessandra was sweating for a minute um yeah. that concentration from Annika and dark hours I think with the, with the best comment yeah these flames are fire so uh yeah well done I love it <laughs> All right, look. There and are Jeremy said, "Freehanding flames, boss level." So there you go. You've got you've got the whole team. Whole All team's right, behind you. 
<laughs> I was I was actually sweating it. I, I didn't want to look like a look like a fool. <laughs> you know, if you just did it without saying anything and you had to do it ten times, it wouldn't have been a thing. But you, you did you you hyped yourself up. You're your own I did. hype man. Yeah, I I have to. No one else to do it for me. <laughs> I just spent the last five minutes hyping you up. <laughs> I'll send I'll send you that hundred dollars. Well. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's my commission. All right. So I'm just making I'm doing like a really rough um, color job, but again using that same um, same technique, like just color, and then like I said, I could just do this, and it's and it's pretty much done. Oops. That's oh, I thought I was gonna fill the whole layer. Alright, and if I want to be true to these flames, that whole front bar is going to have to be yellow. Right, because that's where the fire is coming from. That's where it's coming from, exactly. Right. Yeah. I like that. So yeah, there's me just colouring with no fill layer. And some people are like, well then why did I just explain that whole fill layer thing? Because it's not completely null and void here I can then go select this yellow do my solid color layer leave the yellow delete my old layer and now I can change said flames to whatever color I want right oh green kind of is a vibe but I like that <laughs> that's pretty cool and then yeah you can go in there and um add some more I guess you could add some like little highlights or you could add some darker or here we go. You might want to add it like a gradient into the flames. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. I just lightened the yeah. ends of the flames. That's cool. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's a really cool. quick way to do like a quick little gradient. Yeah, it's just, it, that's on another layer so I can switch it off, switch it on. Mm. But yeah, this is, um this whole car is a little bit of a, a throw together and we got through that flames. I know the black is um covering some and I probably, if it was a real car, there'd just be darker versions of the flame, but... You'll have to deal with that in your own time. Okay. <laughs> it's the quote, so, quote of the day, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could just... And then I might just color in those wheels as well. Same thing. I'm using all those different techniques to finish it. Or maybe it would look cool with black black wheels. So let's just do like a dark gray. And I'm going to use my lasso tool again. Highlight that. Solid color. There we go. Nice. So quick. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is a quick way to do it. Um, it's just getting in the habit of um, doing it. It's... it's like building the foundation the right way from the start, really, yeah. to allow you to, to be quick at this, at this stage. Correct. And then I'll just I'll merge those two and just do it again. I should have drawn both of those at the same time so they're on the same layer. And then again, I might go in there, add some, um, like, so we've now gone from a four color to just don't even worry about putting it on a shirt. It's going to cost too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, so maybe you want to add some, um, little highlights and stuff. That's like the old printing thing. I remember if you ever had like you work on a client project or you work on some sort of budget and you had a bit of money left over, you just throw it into printing. You're yeah. Like, All right. I guess we'll just emboss the title or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like double the printing cost. Let's just do like embossing, put some matte cello everywhere. That's... Yes. Yep. It goes from cool to tacky in one just second. Thicken up the GSM. Yeah. Like an extra hundred. <laughs> Um, these are ways that you too could waste your client's money. Um, don't do that. Uh, not endorsed by me. Not endorsed. <laughs> All right, there we go. Like a little bit of 
the shine on the wheel. Just realised the bumper's supposed to be painted, so the bumper's small. I'll just colour it myself. No lasso tool, just colouring it like a six-year-old. <laughs> colouring in. Yeah. Get this chrome up here. I got a. I missed a question before from Jeremy. Sorry, Jeremy, I did miss this one. Um, do you ever get flack from printers for sending over a PSD file instead of an Illustrator file? Um, actually, no. I, I I haven't had any printer to this day tell me that they would prefer one or the other. Um, in the mm. last, I reckon, two to three years, I think it, that's changed a lot. Um, and I think the printers that don't want to deal with the headache of a PSD, let's call it that, because the vector is so much easier to, to work with, I, I, I would just put it down to lazy because there's like there's no difference in setting it up. Like I think for them, they've got their own like rips and programs and stuff like that. And um, I know a few printers that have told me that there's it's no more work either way. Right. I, I would say maybe it's just the, the level of skill from said printer. Yeah. That's my, that's my opinion. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to turn his headlights on. I'm going to do like a little Um Jeremy's saying he gets uh, can you send an AI file please all the time. Oh. He should just Jeremy should just be like, "Do you know who I am?" <laughs> Does it look like I am going to have that? Just drop it off to them and say deal with it in your own time. Yeah. Uh, question in chat, George. Uh, is there any way to view the first part of, um, of, the, of the video? So if you're, if you're looking to watch the first part of this particular video, you should be able to just scrub back. Um, if you can't on Behance, then um, click the link, jump over to YouTube, and you should be able to do it on YouTube. If not, um, when we finish in about 10 minutes, you'll be able to scrub all the way to the beginning as soon as we finish the stream. But if you're after the first episode, um, then you just need to jump on over to YouTube um, and it'll be the most recent video. It will be part one of this series, so you can watch it from the beginning. Thanks for the question. I blinked and now we're shiny. Yeah, I just was like, I turned the lights on, but then I just put some of these uh, soft edge brushes over the, the solid whites just to nice. give them a little bit of a reflection. And I gotta tell you, I'm thinking about getting a Mustang and putting some green flames on it and <laughs> cru <laughs> cruising the streets. I, I'm feeling it. It's um, looking pretty cool. And the beauty of it is, is if we're still, if if chat or if client is still not happy with the colors, we just have to double click on our layers that we created and we can have a look at these cars, the colors in other versions. So mm. we can do this. I know that there's that orange layer because I was being lazy before. I don't even know where I put it. There it is. Hmm. So then I can go in and take this off. And I can have a blue version of the car. Kind of like that. Yeah. What do they say? Blue and green should never be seen without yeah. a color in between. We just proved them wrong, all right? Is <laughs> is is the black the 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 color, the decider? Yeah. So once you've got your layers set up in a smart, please excuse the mess. But once you've you've got these layers built in a format that you can just go in there and have a play around, like you know, those flames can be whatever color you want. Mm. You know, it's kind of cool. It's um. It's it's full custom and it's gonna be cheaper than going to get the car painted, you know. It's cheaper than getting the car painted. Yeah. I remember I remember years ago when I was younger and I had like my first car and it was just like a white car and I was like, oh, thinking about how much to like it would cost to get it painted. Yeah. Um, I remember speaking to someone who knew about cars and stuff and they're like, you don't pay to get a car like that painted. You just buy a new one. The yeah, that you yeah. Want. I was like, oh man, I can't afford a new car. Yeah, no, it's um, it is it is an expensive game, but I think this is this this process that we spoke about is great for exactly that. You know, um, you can go in and Photoshop a car, like you can play with the the 
you know the colors and the to your heart's content like you know i'm not much of a photo uh photoshop retoucher in that that regard but if i redraw it and i can make my car look like the car i own and play around with the colors like it's not only exciting but you've you've saved you know a fortune on putting the wrong color on your car and yeah yeah you know and i don't know maybe people don't care about cars that much that's fine but um i think there's a there is a big there's a big industry that like relies on this exact process you know concepting mm. cars to give client vision and um direction for a build so this is my version of it um if you see this car on the road you're welcome um, <laughs> someone's gonna see this and go yeah yeah this is what that's, i want yeah that's a good concept i probably yeah. destroyed it it's pink but <laughs> jeremy is absolutely loving it right now oh he's the neon king right like that's right yeah this is the Lord Mobile. <laughs> Lord Mobile. <laughs> That's it. All right. So cool. I've got yeah, Jeremy and Chat. Eighty style. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's got that the the eighties vibe for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's... Gareth had a Cersei Ford Caffrey. I don't know how to pronounce that. Mm, when I was okay. younger, don't know what that is. And Nick says this reminds me of a Hot Wheels car. And yeah. It's so funny because I have this little Hot Wheels car. Oh, look at that. Like here. Uh, this was not scripted. Can we just be clear? <laughs> I pinched this uh, from my mum's house because I realized this was made in like um, the 50s or something. And I'm like, probably, that's cool. You're probably holding on to $40,000 worth of car. <laughs> like it's worth more than the car you drive, Flynn. Be careful with that, would you? Yeah. It's very old and very cool. So it just sits on my computer. There we go. Um, fun fact, a little knickknack from the desk. Yes, I'm just... Sorry, I'm just going in and adding some more of the um, different tones and stuff onto this bumper. I was like, oh, Cerise? It? I'm probably saying that super wrong. I read that wrong. Cerise is a color. Okay. Oh. Good to know. Thank you, Johanna. Can we can we confirm what color Cerise looks? Is that... It's a reddish pink. Oh, is that like, are we talking this kind of color? Pronounced like that, that, Cerise. Okay, cool. Got it. Oh, I want to know what it is. I just, I'm just over here just deciding what color it is. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's cool. You just keep building up and I guess you keep adding things until it is just very much, you know, I'll, I'll say it again. We, we came from... Um, all the way down here. Oh no, not even there. So that's our that's our build. Our builds like look how much better we made that. Look at those big fat tires at the back. <laughs> yeah. Nice deep dish wheels. Lots of color. A bit lower. And it's cool. It's like yeah, we've used a couple of cars and. You've you've definitely spent most of the time tracing it and just using that as your your template, but to get it from that to here, it's it's cool. It's I know that's why I love art and drawing so much because there is no there are no rules. It's yep. you you spend as long as you want on that and you do what you want. No one gets to tell you anything else except I guess the guy paying at the end. It's yeah, it's cool. I'm happy with that. Man, it looks awesome. And I think I remember at the very beginning, I don't know if it was when we were live on camera on, or if it was beforehand, you were sort of saying, oh, it's essentially kind of tracing. But mm -hmm. but by the time you get to this point, there's so much personality that you can put in it. Yeah. Like that it's, it's far away from. Like I think we did a stream a long time ago. When, I don't know. We did a stream in the past where we're talking about referencing. Yep. And we were talking about um, and that. And you had a comment in there that was something along the lines of, like kind of start from there, but it sort of, sort of morphs so many times through the iteration process. Correct. That anyone that saw the final piece, if they look back at the reference, it, it's almost such a departure yeah. from where you begun that it's, you know, it's not like, oh, that's just tracing that or taking a photo and converting yeah. it in a digital and program. There's so much behind it. It just helps you with the foundation. And I think that's what's important is that people understand that you're fully aware that you didn't, I, I didn't create this car. I didn't. Um, the car. I didn't. I didn't build the car, but I used reference photography to to help me build something I'm I'm like drawn to or I'm I'm inspired by. Like I, I can t 
tell you exactly that um, AnnetteCarshow.com down here were the guys that shot this or they own this photo for whatever reason. But I, I did make this my own car. Like it's yeah, you can't find this car on the internet. He he now belongs on my desktop, and that's that's the only place. So <laughs> yeah. It's it's still referencing someone else's work, and I'm not trying to claim it as my own, but I am using it and drawing inspiration from it to create something that's original. So, yep. I think we I think we did a pretty good job at it too. I think it's awesome. I think it's really great. And chat, you guys have been awesome. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We are out of time for today. Um, we'll be we'll be back with more Adobe Live next week. We've only got two weeks left until we're taking a break over the Christmas holidays, so please do join us. Um, but Dale, thank you, man. This has been awesome. I'm going to keep that artwork up there just for yeah, people awesome. to have a look at as we say our goodbyes. But, um, but yeah, thanks again. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, yesterday and today on Adobe Live. It's always a pleasure, Flynn. Thank you very much. Thanks, chat. Legends. All right, we'll see you next time. See, see you guys. guys.